Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14. We're going to look at a verse. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14. Title of the message is, Are You Backsliding? Are You Backsliding? Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14. Proverbs 14, verse 14. The Bible says, The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Amen. Are you backsliding? It's something that every Christian goes through. There's no Christian ever in the history who was perfect and who never backslid in their life. And when we look at and when we hear the word backslide, especially in the Word of God, it has nothing to do with you losing salvation. Some people might think that you know, after you get saved, you backslide and you lose your salvation. Backslide came out in Old Testament, and you can never find backslide in the New Testament. Backslide in the context, if you see Jeremiah chapter 3, talks about a nation, nation of Israel being out of fellowship with God, turning away from God. So if any of you guys are going through backsliding stage, which many people go through on a daily basis or has been going through you know, for weeks, for months, for years. One thing for sure, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll never have to worry about burning in hell. You know, that's a heresy that's you know, come out. People, you know, wrong doctrine, those cults, you know, they say, you know, once you're saved, you're not always saved. You know? because they're messed up in the Word of God. But however, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, no matter what happens, you know, you're going to heaven. You, know, you could take first class, you could take you know, economy, you could be dragged, but you're going to heaven no matter what. You know, praise God for that. But when it comes to Christian, you are backsliding if you are plainly out of fellowship with God. If you are out of fellowship with God, you are backsliding. Your heart has turned away from God, just like Solomon, when his heart turned away from God. Many of you guys don't realize, or you do realize, that your heart has turned away from God. Does not mean that you're not saved, you're saved. However, because of your current spiritual state, you have turned away from God, and you're in a backslidden state. Then how can I check? How do you check that whether you're backslidden or not? A few things. Number one, you're growing cold and losing interest in the Lord. If you are growing cold and losing interest in the Lord, then you're backslidden. When you think about Lord Jesus Christ, when you hear about Lord Jesus Christ, when you preach about Lord Jesus Christ, when you pray to the Lord Jesus Christ, have you lost interest? Is your heart cold? 
You know, a lot of times, relationships expire or gets worse, and relationship doesn't last anymore. Why? Because people grow cold against each other. You know, there's an illustration. There's a husband and wife. You know, they used to love each other so much. However, wife feels that, you know, love has grown cold, right? So she asks the husband, do you still love me? Do you still love me like when we got married, before we got married, right after we got married? Years have passed by. I don't feel the same love like before. And the husband said, look where you're sitting right now. Look where you're sitting. So come to find out, husband sitting right here and wife is sitting right here. She used to be right here, always sat next to him. But years have gone by, and she's, she's further and further away. Husband said, I never moved. I never moved, honey. And she realized, man, I'm the one who's been moving away. When you trusted Jesus Christ, you accepted him as your Lord and Savior. He's your first love. He's always there. He's always here. It's just you and I, you know, we used to be here, but we're straying away little by little. For some of you, you have gone so far where you can't even see him anymore. And you still complain, Lord, Lord, where are you? He's always at the same place. He's always at the same place. It's you who's backslidden away from the Lord. A lot of times, when your heart gets cold, you have no interest. Think about it. When you don't care about someone or thing, you don't really care about hearing about it, right? They're not in your thoughts. If you say you despise, hmm, what should we use it as an example? Say you despise certain food, right? For example, there's a fruit called durian. And I don't know if you guys have tasted durian. It's in Southeast Asia. You could find it you know, in Philippines and surrounding areas. And you could still find it in some Asian markets here. It has a terrible smell. You know? Thankfully, I haven't smelled it yet, but I kind of know how it smells based on what other people say, how it smells like. You know, it smells like you know, poo-poo, you know, they say, right? It smells like dung, you know, and it's acquired taste. And that's not something, you know, I think about on a daily basis, right? Okay, I can't wait to try durian today. I can't wait to try durian tomorrow. I can't wait to try durian with friends, you know, when we get together. Why? Because it's not something that, you know, you want to think about. However, when it comes to, like, nice apple, right? Fuji apple, right? You know, some people like apple, you know. Apple away, take, uh, keeps the doctors away. You know, I like, you know, good apple. For some people, it could be like, you know, some strawberry, you know, or nice coffee, morning coffee, right? Some of you guys wait for that morning coffee. You know, that's how you start your day. Like, that's how you wake up. And you'll never grow cold against that morning coffee because it's something that you think that you have to have it, you know to survive. However, when it comes to Lord Jesus Christ, you start losing that interest if you haven't already. He's not the first morning coffee that you want. He's like the last thing, you know, after you've done everything, right? You know, after you drank your coffee, after you got to work, you started your work, after you got to school, and after you're done with everything, and then you start thinking about Lord Jesus Christ, if you even do. But I mean, what does that tell you? You're cold, and you're, you have lost interest in the Lord. I mean, that's simple, right? Simple enough. If you don't have interest in the Lord, and if you've gotten cold to the point it's like rock-solid ice, then you know 
when you hear about Lord Jesus Christ, when you read about Lord Jesus Christ, when you pray to Lord Jesus Christ, it's just cold. It's like you don't feel anything, right? We're not talking about being charismatic, you know, getting saved with feelings. No, not about that. You just don't have that desire. Your heart's so cold. And you're like, how do I know? How does that feel like? Think about when you get into an argument, when you get into fight with your family members, right? Think about it, right? Whether it's with your wife or husband, whether it's with your you know, children, brothers and sisters, right? You have a huge fight. And right after the fight, you know, unless you're one of those rare ones re realizing it quickly, you feel cold towards them. You also have like an anger towards them. Maybe anger part, you know, dissipates, you know, but you still have that coldness. Like when you see each other, you don't really want to make eye contact, right? And you don't want to talk to the person until the person talks to you. Like, oh yeah, I deserve an apology, you know? You did wrong, she did wrong, he did wrong. And they feel like, there's no way I'm going to talk to that person. They're so cold, right? They're not going to be warm towards me. As Christians, when you deal with Lord Jesus Christ, that's how you are. You've lost interest in the Lord, where when Lord's still there, you don't want to get closer to him. You feel that coldness. And that definitely tells you that you're backslidden. It's not about size of interest that you have in the Lord. We're not talking about you thinking about Lord Jesus Christ every moment of the day. I wish, right? But you do have your work, your school, you have other things going on. But is it consistent, consistently on your mind and in your heart? Do you really think about him? You know, he died for you. He died for me. If some loved ones, right? You know, we compare it to human love, where if someone loved you so much that they died for you. Say, for example, you know, we just had Mother's Day. You are on a train track, and your foot is caught on the rail, and the train is coming at you at 200 miles per hour, and you're about to die. But however, your mom saw you and pushed you out of the way. She got hit by a train, and she passed away. Let me ask you, are you not going to think about your mom every single day of your life? You will. Are you not going to talk about your mom to others, the love that she showed you? to others every single day of your life, whenever you have opportunity, you will. It's just that when it's like a carnal physical things, you remember and you talk about. However, when it comes to spiritual things, especially Lord Jesus Christ, who saved you from hell for our eternity, think about it. You're not going to burn in hell for even a second. You'll be in heaven forever. And he shed his precious blood, every single drop. And he had to go through the most unimaginable unima pain and suffering for you and me. And that's someone that you're losing interest in? Man, if he was like right here and if he was like listening or if someone else, third party who's not saved, heard that that's how you feel about Lord Jesus Christ who saved you from hell, they call it, they'll point at you. They'll be like, shame on you. Shame on you. I mean, I don't believe in Jesus Christ, but if he's the one that you claim him to be and who sacrificed himself for you, and you don't think about him on a daily basis, and you don't talk about him on a daily basis, then man, shame on you. But for so many Christians, I would say 95% and above has lost interest in Lord Jesus Christ. They don't think about him. 
And you don't think about him. I mean, did you think about Lord Jesus Christ when you're coming to church today? If you don't think about him during Sundays, I could just see that on a weekday, you don't think about Lord Jesus Christ at all. If you barely think about him on a Sunday, what does that tell you? You have grown cold and losing interest in the Lord. That's number one. Then secondly, how to check it? And it's, it snowballs now. You have lost interest in the Bible. You have lost interest in the Bible. You don't read the Bible like you used to, if you even have started it in the past. Things of the Bible doesn't interest you anymore. When you used to read the Word of God, and every word was alive to you, and you got so many things out of it, and they really touched you, you learn more about Lord Jesus Christ. You learn more about the doctrines. You find the will of God through the word of God. Those are the days, right? You know, they say dog days of summer. They use it like in a baseball term where it's so mundane, it's like lazy, nothing's happening. It's like Groundhog Day, same day over and over and over. It's like you're robots. You just go through each day. A lot of backsliders I like robots, literally. You know, they lose interest in the Lord, and they lose interest in the Word of God. So it doesn't help anymore. Like, Bible is the last thing they think about. You know, and when you wake up, and the things that you do shows what you care about. I mean, that's how I believe, right? You might think otherwise. Because it shows the first thing that comes to your head, comes to your mind. When you don't think about Lord Jesus Christ, how will you be thinking about the Bible? Have you read your Bible lately? Have you been reading your Bible like when you first got saved? You know? No one here can say that I read enough Bible. How can you, right? I mean, you say, oh, yeah, I, I read three chapters a day, and I'm doing my all, right? Is it really? I mean, it's like just for young kids, you have to because you got to get your parents' signature or else you get, you know, scolding and spanky, right? Besides from it, do you ever read more than three chapters? Man, you're like, okay, each chapter takes me five to ten minutes. So I read two chapters. I only got five, ten minutes to go. Man, I'm at the last couple of verse. Yes, I'm free. Man, you close your Bible, you throw it away, and you do whatever you want. Or for some of you, especially adults here, you don't have requirement to read the Word of God. Do you even read it? I mean, that's the question. Do you even read your Bible on a daily basis? Like some people might say, you know, that is, that is not a smart question. How can you tell or how can you ask someone who's saved, you know, who trusts the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, that they don't read the Word of God? You know, like when outside people see it, they'll be like, man, that shouldn't happen to a Christian. They're telling me that they love the Lord. They want me to trust Christ as their Lord and Savior. But when I ask them about anything, they don't know anything because they don't, they don't ever read the Word of God. Why is it that you don't read the Word of God? Simple. You're backsliding. You're out of fellowship with God. Just remember that. Now, if you don't get anything out of this message, I am out of fellowship with God. I don't love the Lord like I used to. I don't read the Bible like I used to. Then you are definitely out of fellowship with God. I tell you, when I first got saved, you know, it was like the greatest joy ever. I mean, it was, I was so happy and I was so joyful. And because going to church most of my life, no one ever showed me clearly through the word of God how to get saved. 
but coming to our church, verse by verse, you know, through the word of God, you know, got saved for sure. And I wanted to know more about Lord Jesus Christ every day. I wanted to tell more people about Lord Jesus Christ every day. I wanted to spend more time with Lord Jesus Christ every day. However, did that continue for me? Did that continue for you? I'm honestly to tell you it did not. You know, just like you, I'm a human being. Just like you are a human being to everybody else, we go through our backsliding, backsliding stages where our love for the Lord grow cold when we don't read the Bible like we used to or if not at all. So think about it. Do you read your Bible? Not only that, do you read your Bible like you should? Do you spend time in the Word of God? You know, don't say, I read three chapters, I'm done. Do you really spend enough time in the Word of God? And we're not talking about just reading. Just like 2 Timothy 2.15, are you actually studying the Word of God? If you don't study the Word of God, how are you ever going to grow? And especially young people here, right? They say, I'm going to study and I'm going to study my best so that I could get into good college. With that kind of attitude, do you ever apply it to the Word of God? You don't. How do we know? How do I know? Because you don't care about Lord Jesus Christ. You care about your chemistry. You care about your history. You care, care about your English. You care about your mathematics. You care about everything. And you spend so much time in those things. And for adults, it could be your novels, Fiction, nonfiction, magazines, right? You know, all these news articles out there, you know, useless information everywhere. And you spend hours and hours and hours reading those things. Compare that to how much you spend your time reading the Word of God. Compare it. Does it even come close to like one tenth? For some, it's less than a percent. For some, it's zero percent. You know, don't get mad at me. You know, get mad at yourself for being a backslidden Christian. Because you've gone away. You turned away from the Word of God. If I were to ask you, list Bible from Genesis to Revelation. How many of you guys can confidently say it standing up. For many of you guys, since you don't ever open the Word of God, you're stuck after Genesis and Exodus, unfortunately. You know some of the New Testament, right? You go to Revelation. However, what about all the books in, in between? Like minor prophets, right? The reason being is you don't stay in the Word of God. You don't read the Word of God. You don't care about the Word of God. And don't tell me and don't tell others that I love the Bible. I die for the Bible. You won't. Your heart's not there. When time comes for you to stand up for faith and the Word of God, you'll be the first person denying it and running away. How do you think our forefathers of faith, like, those that you read about in Fox's Book of Martyrs and during the World War, how were they able to stand for Jesus Christ? How were they able to stand for the Word of God? I'll tell you this, they weren't backslidden. They were always spending time in the Word of God. They had interest in everything about Lord Jesus Christ. You know, right now, it's been going on. Middle East, you know, it's crazy times, right? You know, war with Israel, everything that's going on. We pray for Israel, right? That's the Bible way, right? And you know that end is coming near too. We don't know when. We're in the last days, right? And then you see all these prophecies getting fulfilled, right? And we're getting closer and closer to the Lord's return. 
And aren't you excited? Shouldn't you be like, wow, smiling? Man, Lord's coming back soon. All these things are happening. May you sing the word of God. I want to know more about what's happening. I want to know more about Lord Jesus Christ. I want to know more about his second coming. I want to know more about rapture. I want to just know more about Lord Jesus Christ because I'm going to see him sooner than later. That should be you. If it was about your favorite sports franchise, you'd be talking about it over and over. If it was about your favorite celebrity or politician, you'd be talking about it over and over. A lot of people who's into politicians will know everything, every detail about a politician that they love, right? Whether it's conservative, whether it's liberal. Every person who loves a sports, if they like basketball, they'll know everything about that team or baseball, basketball, football, or every person who's into social media, who likes us, some personality, they know everything about that person because you follow that person. You know their you know, daily life and everything because you have that love and interest for them. However, when it comes to Lord Jesus Christ and the word of God, you're far away from it. When was last time you think you had the same desire to read the Word of God, like how you love to read one of your favorite things, whether it be, you know, your Facebook stuff, social stuff, Twitter stuff, right, or any other stuff. You know, for some people, they can't wait for someone's tweet, right, or TikTok or anything. I guarantee you, those of you guys who's really into it, you never miss a day of someone who posts it, right? Especially if it's something that they post on a regular basis. You're like, oh man, and then you start talking to your family and friends. Oh, did you see so-and-so, what he or she posted? Did you see so-and-so? You know, that was great stuff. You know, that was so funny. You know, that was interesting. But when it comes to the Word of God, like, uh, you know, I don't know where Hezekiah is, right? Uh, well, where, where is book of you know Caleb? You know, right? You know, you know where's where's like you don't even know the books in the Word of God, and you call yourself a Christian. Man, sometimes, man, you gotta like look at yourself. Man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sorry Christian. You know, as Pastor Shrive always say, you know. I've been a sorry Christian, but I'm never sorry being a Christian, right? But so many, so many Christians are just sorry Christians. Not only that, you grow cold and losing interest in the Lord. You lose interest in the Bible. You have lost interest in prayer. Think about it. How much do you pray? How many hours of day? I'm sorry. How many minutes, no, I'm sorry, how many seconds of day do you pray? Literally, besides from thanking God for food, right, which I believe most people do, right? How many, how much time do you spend in a day in prayer? Think about those days when you had right fellowship with God. How much time did you spend with the Lord? in prayer. It's not one minute. I don't even think it's five to ten minutes. You spend minute after minute, maybe even hours. People ask, how can someone ever spend more than an hour on their knees in prayer? It seems impossible to me. Yes, it is impossible to you, Baxalita and Christian. If you love the Lord, if you read the Word of God, there's so many things to pray about. There's so many things to give God the glory about. You know, prayer, there's an acronym, A-C-T-S, X. First part is adoration. You, know, you give all the adoration to God and Lord Jesus Christ. Think about who He is. Think about what He has done and what he will do. When you read the book of Psalms, right? I mean, David writes, you know, just psalm after psalm about just praising the Lord. I mean, how much do you praise the Lord in your prayers? 
And people say, I want to know God's will in my life. Read the Bible and pray, then you'll find out. Don't just shout out. Don't just say it meaninglessly. I want to live in the will of God. When you don't do anything, it doesn't come to your lap just like that. Salvation is free, but everything afterwards, you have to work hard, right? I mean, do you really think that you spend enough time on your knees in prayer? It's never enough. Think about George Mueller. I mean, the famous, you know, painting of his hand, praying. He prayed for hours and hours and hours. There are a lot of people, a lot of prayer warriors out there, just forefathers of faith. Their knees were bad, not because they played sports all the time, they ran all the time, because they spent so much time on their knees praying. I'm not asking you or me to get to that level. Even if we try, we're not. We're not there. But you got to take baby steps. You got to take that first step. Have you lost interest in prayer? Think about the days when you really, really felt like you were close to the Lord. You're in the right fellowship with the Lord. How much time did you spend in prayer? How many times of the day did you spend in prayer? Did you wake up and pray to the Lord? Throughout the day, you spoke to the Lord in prayer. Before you went to sleep, did you pray? It becomes part of your life. I mean, pray without ceasing, right? I mean, it becomes really part of your life. Backsliding Christians don't care about prayer. They only pray when they want to pray. They only pray when something happens in their life. Lord, I need this. Please, Lord. Lord, I need that house. I need that car. I need that job. I need that money. I need this and that. That's when you pray. For some reason, if Lord blesses you, or the devil blesses you, and then you get those things, there's no more prayer in your life. Literally. For some of you guys, unless there's crisis in your life, you never pray. Literally, prayer is the last thing you ever do. For young people, you only pray when you have to get to a good in college, right? When it's college time, you pray more than ever before. Lord, let me get into this college A. Let me get into college B. Lord, I got rejected. Lord, it's your fault. And you never pray. When? It was always your fault. That's why you have to daily check whether you're losing interest in prayer. If you have, then you have backslidden. How can you say, I have right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ when you don't spend any time with him in prayer? It's just downright comical, right? When you love someone, what do you do? You talk to them. You have conversation back and forth. You want to know more about them, right? Uh, we have a couple brothers who's going to get married, right, within a year or two. Do you think they just sit there and just, okay, let's set up our wedding date, and we're not going to talk until our wedding day. You know what? I know your name and your age, and I know where you live. That's it, right? I don't care about what you like. I don't care about what you don't like. I don't care about what you do. I don't care about your feelings. You know, I don't really care. Let's just get married, and that's it. OK, that's not going to work. That is not going to work. You'll be talking to them. You'll be reading about them, right, if you can. And then you'll be constantly in conversation with them. But when it comes to Lord Jesus Christ, why is it so hard? Right? He's your first love. Right? He's your first love. And it's that love everlasting. It goes forever. 
Why is it that you don't talk to the someone that you love? He's still sitting here. But you used to be here. Man, you know what's really annoying? When you try to talk to someone, but we have distance. Like me and you know, Brother Andrew back there, right? Having conversation from here to back there will be pretty tough, especially without the audio system. I'd be like, Andrew, how are you doing? Like, we have to shout and shout. And then most of the time, we're going to say, like, oh, what did you say? What did you say? Hey, what did he say? You know? That's how far you've gone further away from the Lord. It's like, the Lord's telling you something. But you're so far away and backslidden that you can't even hear him anymore. Right? Holy Spirit is convicting you of everything. Okay, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. You just woke up, man. It's time to pray, you know. Let's be filled with the Holy Ghost today. No. You're so far away. Like, you're all over there. You can't hear nothing. It just tells you that you backslid into the point where prayer is not part of your life anymore. Reading Bible is not part of your life. Things of the Lord definitely is not part of your life. And fourthly, what happens? You lost interest in going to church. You lost interest in going to church. I, mean, I could say you guys are here, so I'm pretty sure you still have interest in coming to church. But is this something that's going on every time when the church's door opens, right? For some, going to church is something that they feel like doing when they need help from the Lord. Like, oh, Lord, nothing's going well in my life, so I'm going to go to church today. For some, when everything goes well, they don't come to church. Like, oh, Lord, thank you for your blessings. I have, you know, internet to watch your sermons, so I'm okay. You know, directly disobeying, you know, Hebrews 10, 25, assembling together. They're like, Lord, I'm okay. I'm going to go fishing, you know. I'm going to be on a nice boat up there, out there in the ocean, giving glory to you, and I'm just going to try to catch some tuna. You know? <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, wow, what a great Sunday, right? Tells you, you're a backslidden Christian. If you don't have interest in going to church, just remember, you're directly disobeying the word of God, Hebrews 10.25. That's it. Not only that, it just tells you, you'd rather be with someone or people who's not interested in the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know what your heart looks like right now, but I know that at least some part of you have interest in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you're here. But think about those days when you're not here. Is it because you can't move? Or is it because you don't have that same interest in the Lord Jesus Christ on those days? You haven't read the Bible like you're supposed to because you didn't pray like you were supposed to. That's why you lose interest in going to church. If I love my brethren, I want to spend more time with my brethren. If I love the Word of God, I want to listen to the Word of God as well. If I love praying, I want to pray together with my brethren where you could pray. However, for some of you, going to church is the last thing that you want to do. Think about people who's listening to this message throughout the world. They don't have a local church to go to. And pray that, you know, they, you know, God calls someone and start a church in, you know, our brethren's area throughout the world. But for you, you have no excuse. You have a place to go. You have a local church to go. But because you're backslidden, you don't have that desire anymore. You lost that interest. Not only that, Fifthly, you cease to witness. 
I really haven't seen too many backslidden Christians who love to go out there and witness for Jesus Christ. They can't even take care of themselves. How do you think you're going to be able to witness to others? I mean, do you have desire to see souls get saved? Do you want to witness to others about Lord Jesus Christ? At one point in your life, did you actually were on fire to witness for Lord Jesus Christ? Wherever you went, man, you couldn't wait for God to give you opportunity. Even you all ahead of God's will. And then you try to talk to everyone about Lord Jesus Christ. You know, your life was full of fruits. You see people get saved left and right because of your love for the lost souls out there. Backslidden Christian is all selfish. Backslidden Christian only likes what they see, especially on TV, especially on, you know, Internet, especially everywhere throughout the media. They don't care about others. Last thing they care about is lost soul going to hell. Look at yourself. Do I have love for the lost souls out there? When was the last time I witnessed to a soul about heaven and hell, gospel of Jesus Christ? I mean, you cease to witness. And lastly, you know, back, backslidden state, you turn to the world for help. You turn to the world for help. When their problem arises, you don't go to the Lord. You go to the world. When problem arises, you don't go to prayer. You go to a psychiatrist. When problem arises, instead of going to the word of God, you go through every other solution out there. Isn't that common for backslidden Christian? You turn your help to the world. That's it. I am going to call 1-800-blah-blah-blah. I'm going to call 1-800-blah-blah-blah. I'm going to go to this place, that place. I'm not saying, you know, for things of that nature, you don't go, but you always go to the Lord first. You turn to the Lord for all your help. Before your eye surgery, right? Before your cases, before your work, before your schooling, everything. You turn to the Lord first, not to the world. As a backslidden Christian, you are definitely going to go to the world first. Isn't it funny? First thing you do is, you know, open your phone. You Google, okay, I have this problem, ABC, where's the solution? CDF, where's the solution? Instead of going to the Lord. And when the world gives you help, that doesn't help you. Then you start blaming God. God, they didn't help me. I thought you loved me as a child. God, she didn't help me. He didn't help me. That organization didn't help me. This, nobody ever helped me. How come you say you love me? I didn't get help. But you look at yourself. You never went to him in the first place. You always go to others for help instead of the Lord Jesus Christ. You always go to outside help when you have help inside of you. You always go somewhere else when the help is closest to you. Then you know. You're in backslidden state. Then how can you get out of it? I mean, how can you get out of it, right? First thing is that you have to reckon yourself dead to sin. You have old body and a new body. When you trusted Jesus Christ, you became a new man. Mortify your old body. Consider it dead. Right? I use it over and over. Who's going to rule over your heart? Is it going to be you or is it going to be Lord Jesus Christ? And in conclusion, I'll conclude with this. Very, very famous verse, right? Let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Think about the state you're in right now as a Christian. Have you lost interest in the Lord? Have you lost interest in the Bible? Have you lost interest in prayer? Have you lost interest in going to church, having fellowship with brethren? Have you lost will to witness to lost souls out there? Have you turned to the world for help instead of the Lord? Their solution. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, 
the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You need to set your affection on Lord Jesus Christ. When he becomes number one in your life, you could get rid of your backslidden ways. When he becomes number one in your life, you want to spend more time with him. When he becomes number one in your life, you want to read more Bible. When he becomes number one in your life, you want to be with people who's the same Savior and Lord. When he becomes number one in your life, you want others to know more about him. When he becomes number one in your life, you go to him for any help, any issues, for any occasion. Are you backsliding? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for saving us from hell through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. However, we have left the first love, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we have gone into this backsliding state. Lord God, I pray that everyone will recognize whether they're backsliding or not and get right with you, Lord, confess our sins, mortify our body, and really look unto you every single day, every moment of the day, so that we will have and we'll be in fellowship with you. So many, of us, so many of us are out of fellowship, Lord, because of things of the world, because of everything, issues of life, Lord. Help us to just come before you honestly and just leave it at your feet and just get closer to you, Lord. Help us to find that first love we used to have before we backslid, Lord. We pray that you be with Pastor Shrive and everyone who needs to get healed completely, Lord. Please be with them. I pray for every member here, Lord God, and people who's listening, be with them as well. And then anyone who's you know, having issues with their salvation, Lord God, help them to really get assurance of salvation through the word of God. And I pray that we'll all get out of this backsliding stage, putting you as our number one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you, everyone.